she's walking down the aisle as the, the bridesmaid, and he's literally only looking at her. The looks he gave her were. He was looking at her like he was in love with her. I was like, boy, you're doing that in public? And then when they're doing their vows, he's not even looking at Edwina. He's only looking at her. And I'm like, this is embarrassing. <laughs> So, Leo Miss Madonna is back, okay? We're starting from season two. We're excited. We're like, mm. And the premise for season two is Anthony is looking for someone to marry. We've got some new people on the scene. The people that I have not mentioned yet. This is The Viscount Who Loved Me, her second book by Julian Quinn. It's her own. It's to me the only book that's like, okay. Like, I love reading, love books. I'm not a huge fan of her books. I like the story ideas, but I don't like her writing and I don't like the way she writes men and women in books. I'm sorry. And maybe it's because it's a little too realistic of the 1800s and I'm not vibing with the 1800s. Like, I'm sorry. It was kind of trash back then. So setting the scene, one thing we should know, um, Simon's not here anymore. Where did he go? He's not, like, Simon, Simon is, still there but like the guy who plays him didn't come back for season two i don't know the reason why but he's not really in the story he's mentioned though by daphne but he's not there she has a kid already colin comes back from greece yay her style gets better season two season two the style the makeup the everything setting the scenes whatever it was they were just better and you can't tell me i'm wrong so new people come into town we have the Sharmas. Yes, they're staying with Lady Danbury. They're from India, okay? She used to marry up here in the mall, but we used to, used to be in London, but she shamed her family by running away with a man that she loved who wasn't a part of the upper class. And now she's back in town. She's back in town with her besties, her little kids. And she wants them to get married. We have Kate, I love her, period. And we have Edwina. Edwina's younger, Kate is older. Kate is not her actual kid. Anthony's looking for a wife. He's kind of rude about it though. He gets better looking at season two though. Sienna's gone, so he's trying to move on from her. He's trying to get married because, not for love, not for love, he's trying to get married because he needs somebody to have kids with and to keep his family line going. So he basically kind of goes around looking for some people to get married to and he makes up a list of things, like a, like a weirdo, a list of requirements for her to be able to have kids, be agreeable, pretty silent and demure. And that's very similar to Anthony's book he makes the exact same type of thing it's like very much the same kate wants to get her sister married she's a spinster because she's 26 and apparently back in the day that's considered old um she wants to get her sister married lady amber is like okay i'll meet you to the queen and we'll figure this out like let me help her get married too and she's raised her all her life kind of with mary into being like prepared for marriage like where she had no other dreams just like daphne of like only being like a per proper lady in life kate Overhears Anthony at a party because they get invited to a party and show her him in the bushes and she's like she hears him talk about the way he talks about him and she's like ew and I'm like ew I agree and he like sees her and he's like hey who goes there and she's like mm. and then he's like oh she's kind of cute and he tries to talk to her and she like literally hands him his his mind and she's like you're trash and he's like the woman is talking back to me whoa and so from the jump they're literally enemies enemies to lovers is, is the epic trope it's the best one you can't tell me i'm wrong argue with the wall it is better and kate is now that she knows who this man is because he's like kind of like top gun in the time right because the persons are are rich they're well known they're like the best of the best right um she's like and he knows he's a hell of a man he's trash and Luna's like mm -hmm. but he's cute and i'm like he is cute Daphne's here and there, comes and sees him. Um, Colin is not interested in finding anybody. He wants to by himself. But now that we know she's legally getting herself out this season. So now we know that she wants to keep up her business. She's finding it harder to keep up her business and keep it secret because everybody wants to know. And her papers are becoming more and more popular. With him gone, uh, Lady Featherington has a new Featherington coming into town. who's supposed to take over as Lord Featherington. And it is cousin Jack Featherington from the Americas. He's British, but he was in America for some reason. And these two don't really get along. That's really all you need to know right now. Eloise is still on her search for Lady down. She never really gives up. It's kind of really, really all she cares about. Kate is hiding the secret knowing that Edwina has to get married to somebody who's like of British like value, high value, in order for her to get money from 
her grandparents, but I really doesn't know this, but Kate is like, I have to find her husband to make sure that she's secure, that she has money, she's not gonna be poor, because all she cares about is her sister. Um, I love Kate. I this before, I love her. I love Simone Ashley. If you see me in her comments, like, I wasn't there, and you literally can't prove that. Also, Newton is in the story. Love him. Kate's dog. Okay, Newton doesn't like Anthony, by the way, which is really important because Newton is a really good judgy character. Um, the Queen says that Edwina is the diamond of the season, this new season, right? Daphne was the old one. Anthony's like, I need to get married to the top girl, so she makes the most sense. They like kind of hit it off, go well with each other in the beginning. Kate's mad, she's like, ew, you are not the guy I want for her. She blocks her like a lot. Lady Emily's like, I don't understand why you don't like him. Like, He's literally a virgin. And Violet's like, oh, oh my god. She's all happy because Anthony's always picking somebody because she just wants him to get married. That's all she wants for her kids to do, get married. Anthony continually tries to win Edwina's heart and all of this and that. Now, I don't want to get too deep into season two because season two just came out. Like, you can literally go watch it on Netflix. But what's really important to note is how different the Viscount Who Loved Me is from season two, the Viscount Who Loved Me version, right? In the books, I think it's not really that into him. Like, she's into him, but, like, she kind of likes this other guy, Lord Bumbery. She's not really that into him. In the show, she's very much into him, and she wants to be in love. She wants to marry for love. And Kate knows that. And Kate also knows that Anthony doesn't want to marry for love, which is why he doesn't want, she doesn't want him to be with her. One of the important things that happens in the show that you should know is we get the backstory of the main characters. So we know that Anthony has a backstory where he doesn't want to love or learn about love or whatever, whatever, because his daddy died. And his dad died right in front of him because his dad was allergic to bees and he was traumatized by that. And watching his mom go through the pain and torture of losing her love made him be like, I don't want that. No, thank you. I do not subscribe. I will not marry for love. But in the books, Anthony actually, same similar situation, but he actually doesn't, doesn't want to fall in love because he thinks that his dad dying early means that he's going to die early because it's like genetic. Like back in the day, I don't think he really understood that not everybody is allergic to bees. Like the man died because he was allergic to bees, but he doesn't understand that. Like it's a different time to say you're confused, they don't know about these things. But Daphne Lafar and Benedict are no longer together. That's where you should go, okay? He is single, still working on his art, still cute as hell, still the most adorable, lovable character. We love Benedict. Colin goes to visit this Miss Maria Thompson. She's back in the story. She's married to Sophie McCrary. She is twins. And he, I don't know what he does, but he like tries to talk to her. Not to rekindle things, but to like talk about what's happened between them. And it was a waste of an episode. Like season two focused a lot on everybody else. <laughs> They're wrong for that. They're wrong for that. And then they have a whole plot line with Feather and Tins that takes up everything, all of our screen time. Where Lady Featherington and Jack Featherington are not getting along. Lady Featherington tries to get prudence to look his way because. Cressa the Cowper, the little roach she is, wants to be with Jack, and they have like a little fling, like a little googly eyes thing going on. She's like, ew, you are not gonna do any feathering to him. So she tries to get put in seal with him. This is really weird because they're cousins, but they're fourth cousins, so she's like, it's okay. And I'm like, is it? Is it? And then Lady Featherington and Cousin Jack Featherington end up having a lot of interesting conversations and teaming up because she realizes that all the jewels that he sells to people in the town that he got from the Americas, he says, there's gold over there, whatever, isn't real. That all the jewels are fake. And so she like is like, bruh, you don't know who I am. We could be scheming together. So they become scheming buddies and sell the fake jewelry to the ton. And she ends up getting more money, which is really good because that's all she really needs. And he lies about his riches too, so they, they, they're working well together. They end up having like a weird thing. Like, I think they kissed once. I don't know, but it's like a weird thing. And I'm like, ew. Um, your daughter is engaged to this man. Ew. Eloise is still looking in search for Lady Whistledown, so she finds the place that Penelope has her papers printed. And she meets a man named Theo Sharp, and we love Theo Sharp. Like, literally, I love him. <sighs> anyway, he's like the paper boy or something like that. And they end up getting back and forth in conversation, and they kind of have a thing because it's kind of cute. Penelope's worried that Eloise is going to find out, or someone's going to find Lady Whistledown. So she teams up with Magdalene with Delacroix to find a way to ship the papers and her story easier while she's making her dresses. Like, they just them together because she ends up finding out about Penelope and blah, blah, blah. So, you know, women supportive women, period. Kate and Anthony Baker a lot. They, she, they ended up getting invited to the family home, Aubrey Hall, 
is to fight a lot over Mao pa Pa-Bao. He's just put us to it, get engaged to everyone by the end of this weekend that they have a pa Bao or this week that they're spending there. Kate is against it, but she knows that there's only so much she can do. So she makes his life hell, and I love her for it. Love her. Because he needs to be humbled. He's literally trash. Like, he's kind of trash. He is in the books, too. And this also happens in the books as well. They end up having a, a scene at the end of episode, I don't know what episode it was, where there's a bee, and the bee, while they're arguing, because that's all, all they freaking do, bee stinks Kate, and Anthony, because of his daddy, is like, ah, she's gonna die. And they have this whole intense, beautiful scene where he's like having a panic attack. She's like, oh, I'm stunned. And then he, <laughs> and he's like, are you all right? Are you okay? And she's like, it, calm down, it's only a bee sting. I'm all right, I'm all right. And then they have this intense moment where they almost kiss. And they're both like, whoa, what was that? And I was like, that's love, baby. So Kate feels weird now because she should have gone with Anthony because he's too out of thing. Anthony does not propose to Eddie, you know, when he like is supposed to or like when everyone expects him to. And it's like a weird thing. And now everybody knows all sad. The feathers seek up more than more screen time than they should, okay? Like it's literally sickening. They have a ball at Aubrey Hall. Kate and Anthony end up sharing a moment on the dance floor. She says, I'm leaving for India after you and Nina get married. And then they have an intense moment in the in, in one of the like the rooms, like where they're all, both yelling at each other. And then they almost kiss. They show a really intense moment. Like Anthony is down bad for her. It's sickening. And Kate is just like, what is going on? Benedict has a fling with somebody else. That's why you really need to know what's happening with him. Daphne notices that Anthony has a thing for Kate and not Irina. She notices from the jump because she's She's smart like that. She gets And Edwina's supposed to really have feelings for Anthony. This is not happening in the books. In the books, Edwina doesn't care for Anthony that much. There's this one has a love triangle. In the books, there's no love triangle. I hate that they added it in there. I was kind of pissed. I was like, this is taking away more and more time that we could have them together. And contrary to the first one, the first season, these two got together really quick. Whereas in season two, these two take forever to get together. And a lot of people were mad about that. That's why they hated it so much. But I loved it. Even though I hate the love triangle. Getting them together really quickly is gross. Important note to make. In the books, these two get together because after the bee scene that also happens in the books, the moms, Lady Featherington, Violet, and Lady Ambry, find them and he's sucking the venom out of her bee sting, which is really, really weird to think about. And because of that, it's an intimate thing happening in front of them, they're forced to marry. <sighs> Why can't they like find out that they like each other and love each other? before they get married. I hate this forced marriage thing. But Julia Quinn loves that trope. She uses it in like every book. Eloise and Theo have more moments together and she's like kind of feelings for him and so is he and it's like literally normal and I want them to be together so badly. Even though I know that they're not gonna be together because in her book she's not with him. Oh anyway, moving on. At the end of it, Anthony ends up getting engaged to Alina. Even though put out that he's like, I think you have a thing for Kate. But he gets engaged to her because he thinks it's the right thing. And he doesn't, he'd rather be with somebody he's not in love with because of the fact that his parents were in love and they like lost and like that's painful to him than be with somebody that he could actually like, learn to love. Because you can see that he has a thing. Like he can, he can see himself grow to love her. Even while they're engaged, these two still keep having a lot of intense moments behind closed doors they shouldn't. They don't ever actually like kiss or do anything more than that. But it, this show, this season didn't have any of that. It, it, all it had was burning tension, and that's what made it better. Because you can see that there's something between them, and they keep denying it, and it's like, oh, but it's like, yes. <laughs> Eloise is getting closer to finding out who Lady Feather, Lady Whistledown is. So Penelope ends up outing her in the newspaper. She's like a part of this woman's suffrage, woman's liberal rights thing, which like, like I, I'm, I think I'm in support, but obviously the, back in this time period it's bad. And this is bad because Eloise, I forgot to mention, this is her first season being out with Daphne last season, and she's already dealing with the stress of like not wanting to get married. So now everyone in the, in the time is like, <gasps> she's a liberal, <gasps> she wants someone's rights, guys! And like the queen is kind of like not really with that either. So now she's like literally crying and upset, and Penelope tries to justify her behavior because she's like, I'm doing this to make sure that you don't get, she doesn't find out Lady Blizzard now is, or the queen doesn't find out, and like, yada yada yada, and like, that's the one thing I didn't like that she did, like, I don't know, kind of was mad at her for it, but that doesn't mean I still don't like her, like, I think she's a flawed character, she does everything with the intention of trying to fix 
and do good, but she just does it the wrong way. But I still love her anyway because she's my bestie. The Featheringtons are again still in most of these episodes. We do not care. Um, they're scheming. These two are having a little affair kind of thing going on. It's a little bit weird. These two share a lot of moments. These two are about to get married and the queen is hosting the wedding and it's this big thing and everyone's like, a big wedding! Oh my gosh! The ring is finally getting married! It's their wedding day, right? Bippity boppity, it's their wedding day. Kate is having a lot of like internal conflict because she's kind of, she doesn't want them to get married because they don't want the same things, okay? And then she also has feelings for him. Lady Embry also realizes that Kate has feelings for him, okay? Daphne knows this as well. Violet, she sees something, but she's not really paying attention. They still have a lot of moments together that's like fishy because it's like, girl, that's your sister, you're doing that? That's messed up. But then at the same time, I also don't feel bad for Edwina because these two have a chemistry that is unmatched. It's beautiful. Like, literally, I cried when I saw it. I was like, I want that. I want that. And he does a lot of things this season. He's a very changed person because of Kate. And he does a lot of things this season that are beautiful and poetic. Um, you were abandoned my existence. <sighs> he literally is like, it doesn't matter where you go in the world. It, it's not far enough. India's not far enough. I'm literally in love with you. He literally says, if I get married to Edwina, you can't be around because I literally will be looking at, lusting after you and I will cheat on her. Like, what? unhinged that he should not have said that but anyway the wedding happens and the wedding is like the most embarrassing thing ever i'm sorry like not embarrassing like embarrassing but it's like this secondhand embarrassing like i can't handle this right now so she's walking down the aisle as the, the bridesmaid and he's literally only looking at her the looks he gave her were he was looking at her like he was in love with her i was like boy you're doing that in public and then when they're doing their vows he's not even looking at Edwin. And then that's what I do with this is because her bangle falls on the ground and while they're in their vows, her bangle falls, he jumps down to help her put it back on. What? You need to do all that. As when it runs out, she runs out. The wedding is on standstill and everyone's like, ah, what's going on? And the queen's all back and she's like, why are they not getting married? And then Edwina and Kay have a big fight because she's like, girl, you're in love with them? You liar, you snake. Oh, as she should because that's kind of wrong. You shouldn't be doing that. But also she calls her half sister and I was like, I'm gonna, I hate you right now. That's a really mean thing to say. And it's annoying because in the books, these two end up getting forced to get married and Edwina actually doesn't care. She's happy for Kate. So that never happens. And in the books, the main difference is Anthony and Kate are married and Kate is worried that he doesn't actually love her and that every time, every time they're together, he's thinking of her. He also tells her, I will never love you, which, ill. And Kate's like, okay. And then they just like deal with that. And so they end up calling up the wedding. The queen is embarrassed and mad. The Bridgetons are now like seen as like, like shamed in public. Lady Danbury and the Charmers as well. It's like kind of embarrassing. There's a whole thing where their grandparents come in and Anthony also defended them. So that's a whole other thing to also know. He's getting, he's getting better in my eyes. I love him. I love him now. Again, the Featheringtons take up way too much of the plot. Uh, like, I don't know what else to say. There's still, like, so much screen time with these, 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 these four or five. And I'm not talking about Penelope, really. I'm talking about them. And Lady Penelope, Lady Danbury and Violet and Mary come up with an idea. Make sure you two are not together in public, no matter how much, how much you have feelings for each other. Like, we have to be at peace in public. They can't know that there was an affair going on. And they're like, we're gonna host a ball. And... These two are really bad at not showing their feelings, especially him. Like, she can kind of, like, hold it together. He can't. He can't. He can't. In public, he's literally, like, gawking at Kate. Like, it's disgusting, and we love it. I throw a ball. No one shows up. Mean. But they end up having fun together. It's together. It's the cutest moment of this, the whole season. Like, literally watch it. And then they have, these two are in the garden together, having an argument. Okay? And he's all, like, go inside and i'm all like what and she's all like don't tell me what to do and then <laughs> and they're fighting and then he's he's so annoying to me because she doesn't listen and she's so annoying to him because he likes to control people and it's like their thing and they continue to like banter back and forth they kiss this is also the first time they kiss they kiss the first time at the wedding when nobody was around they hook up in the garden and i'm like ew y'all are outside and everyone's still inside like that's what mind-boggling like, y'all are weird. Anyway, 
let's keep going. So they wake up the next morning, she's gone. She's on her horse ride. She loves horses, by the way, it's a huge thing. She goes on her horse ride, has a uh, grand old time. Anthony wakes up, chases after her, and he's like, where are you going, Kate? And she's running in the opposite direction. I'm like, where are you going, Kate? Why are you running from this man? Well, like, I'm in love with him. Why are you running from me, you idiot? She ends up, her horse gets spooked when they're, when she's like going over some ledge. The horse lifts up. Kate falls on her head and literally, I don't know if she cracks her head open, but she cracks her head on a rock and she's bleeding like concussion. She's concussed. You know, 1800s, their advancements in medicine is nothing. So, <sighs> Anthony is traumatized. <laughs> Using the adrenaline, he picks her up, carries her, brings her all the way to the hall. Edwina's freaking out, Murray's freaking out, Father's freaking out, everyone's freaking out because I'm like, hey, okay. She goes into a coma for three days. No, wait, not three days. She goes into a coma for a whole week. Like, Bessie literally missed Monday through Sunday, and like, what? <laughs> Edwina kind of feels bad about how everything feels with everything because they're still fighting, but like, they used to have like, a complete really relationship prior to the whole cheating ish affair scandal. Anthony does not go to visit Kate while she's literally in a coma. It's because he's stressed the hell out. He focuses only on his work and his duties in the Bridgerton household. And Violet is has a conversation with him about loving. And once he finds out that Kate wakes up, because she does wake up, he's all like crying. And it's like the most beautiful thing. In the books, this doesn't happen. In the books, they, she goes on a carriage ride with Edwina. She gets into an accident, but she's fine. And he finds her, pulls her out of the accident, and that's when he admits that he loves her. Also, another thing in the books that wasn't included is Kate's fear of storms, and Anthony helps her through it. It's like a big thing in the books. It's not included in the show. I wasn't that mad that they didn't include it because I love the show anyway. Like Shonda and the writers, they use what they should use. It's like source material. It's not really supposed to follow these. Um, thank God they don't, because the books in their own way are kind of boring, and they kind of go all over, like they're kind of, Anyway, Anthony is really in his feelings and he's like, I know what I have to do. He goes to visit Kate, he proposes to her. And we're all like, yes, Kate say yes. She says no, because she doesn't really understand what's going on. She thinks that he's proposing because they hooked up in the garden and like, it's the right thing to do. But he's actually proposing because he loves her, but she doesn't really understand that. So anyway, so we wrapping it up, we're at like the last episode, okay? There's a big ball at the end. Of the thing at this big ball, Kate is leaving. So is Edwina, and so is Mary. Mary Kate and Edwina are also back in the in good zones together. Lady Featherington doesn't like the way Cousin Jack is going about their scheming, and she kind of like outs him and makes him leave and protects her daughter. So that was like the, a bad boss move. I love her. Like, she's, like she's she's a crook, but I love this woman. I like a lot of the ladies in the show. Like I'm not gonna lie, the men are kind of trash in their own way. Except for the next. I love him. I love him so much. So I do know how and Anthony have this dance, a last dance, and it's so good. And like, I cry and I watched it twice. And then Anthony does this thing right here. <laughs> it's the most beautiful thing. And it's like checking to see if she can see, like, look, like count because she has a concussion. She's probably still concussed. And it's like a foreshadowing because they actually end up having three kids in the book, so. Um, they dance one last time and it's this beautiful thing. She does the eyebrow scrunch thing and it's like adorable. And there's fireworks outside. They finish the dance. Anthony's in his bag. Also, another thing that, that's really important to know between the relationship, Anthony has a huge thing for her scent. He's obsessed with the way she smells. This isn't just something they made up in the show. It's also in the book because Kate like showers in like this lily soap or whatever and he whiffs the ground she walks past. Like it's it's disturbing it's it's beautiful like i love it but it's like oh my gosh it's intense i'm literally losing my voice oh my gosh eloise finds out that penelope is lady whistledown dun, dun, dun. she's really upset because penelope out of her in the paper is about lies she ends her relationship with theo i was pissed because i love them together she also has like a thing with footman jack but i don't think they have a thing i think that as watchers we just think she has a thing with her footman jack Hated them, I hate the fact that these two broke up or weren't allowed to be together because they're literally so cute together. Like, you can't tell me you're wrong. Like, I don't care if she's supposed to be with Philip Cray. Like, I don't care. Kate and Anthony talk outside and have this intense moment before, while fireworks are going off. He's like, I love you. And I'm like, whoa. And then he's like, I will humble myself before you. I want to be with you, spend a life with you, create a life with you. He's all 
lot of things that were just like, oh, so beautiful. Like this man said he couldn't write poetry, lies. Me, it's all like, okay, I love you too. And period. They kiss. And then she's like, don't forget, you still text me. And he's like, I better. And I'm like, you guys are so adorable. So yes, our message for the rest is our enemies become lovers. And all is right in the world. Oh, a very important thing to know. Colin and Penelope, he said a lot of things to Penelope this season that like pissed me off. One, he said, you're not a woman, you're a pen. Because her nickname pen. He doesn't view her as a woman, he kind of views her as like just this person in his life that always gives him good advice and always cares about him. And it's like annoying because it's like, are you dumb? Why would you say that? That's like an insult or something. He doesn't view her as someone he could be attracted to. And like, I'm sad for her because I love Penelope. Then at the end of the season, he randomly says in a conversation with some other guys, when they're like, you were dancing with Penelope, do you have a thing for her? He says, that's ridiculous. I would never marry Penelope. <laughs> I was ready to kill him. And mind you, I like Colin. I think he's an agreeable character. Like he doesn't really do anything to make me mad at him. But when he said that, mm -mm -mm. I was ready to kill him. I was, I was mad. Penelope overhears this and now she's literally depressed and I feel bad. She lost her best friend and now she really knows that the guy that she loves does not have any feelings for her. Like I can't do this unrequited nonsense. It's literally painful to watch. Fun fact, this scene that happens with them does in fact happen in Romance and Mr. Bridgerton, their book. And so I know that was a lot and like I'm kind of chaotic and I probably missed a lot of good points, but that's a wrap on season one and two. <laughs> Anthony, Kate, they get married, they go on a honeymoon. They skip literally so much of their storyline and I'm pissed about it because I wanted to see them together being happy because they never really got to be happy in season two. They just kept, oh, they were so separated. Like, oh, the yearning was so painful. Um, Anthony is now Newton's dad. Newton kind of likes Anthony now. Although Newton's literally the most unproblematic character. I love him so much. Like, I don't right here. Best for the rest of the love time. So now here is like my extra that I'm gonna go into that I really wanna explain. A lot of things I've noticed as a pattern in the season that you should really take note of is the fact that in the show, the characters, the main Bridgertons that we look at, cause the story's about them, they're always with somebody else for a little bit before they get with the person they're supposed to be with, if that makes sense. Anthony is with Sienna. We know that she wasn't gonna be the main girl. Like she was gone for the minute. The main person he was, he's actually with in the books, Kate, okay? Um, that Benedict is with Madame Delacroix, okay? They don't even last past season one. We know that he's supposed to be with somebody else. We don't know what she's gonna look like, but she's Sophia from an off from a, a gentleman, which is their book. Daphne had a thing with the prince, didn't last. She actually ends up being with Simon. Eloise is a thing with Theo. We kind of are hinted at, we know that probably won't last. And we know this because also in her book, she's with Sir Philip Crane. She ends up marrying the guy who was with Marina Thompson. Right? I know that's really confusing, but in the books, Marina is actually a cousin of Eloise and she dies. Yeah. Sorry, I spoiled that. I, you can read the books, it's not a big spoiler. She ends up dying in the books. She tries to commit as for it doesn't work out, but then she ends up dying after because she gets sick. And Philip needs somebody to take care of the kids that she left behind. And Eloise is a cousin, so they end up. Eloise is her cousin. She ends up sending letters to him. They send letters for a year and they have a thing. I don't know. I don't really care for the love story. To be honest, if you read the books, I hate her book. I hate it. I hate it. They don't really, they don't do it for me. It's giving Beauty the Beast vibes, you know what I mean? Where he's kind of like that beast where he's like grumpy and doesn't really know how to interact with women or people in general, whatever. Penelope and Colin, we know they end up together. And in their book, Penelope, I mean, Colin ends up finding out about her being like whistled down. So I don't know how they're going to play that out. So from what we know, next season, they said they're going to play into multiple Bridgerton roles, which we thought it was going to be like, season after season, there's a different Bridgerton. I don't think they're doing that. I think they're going to combine Benedict and Colin, I think, in some way. Like, I don't know. Benedict is going to meet Sophia. Benedict's story in Off from the Gentleman is a Cinderella story. It's just about retelling, okay? She's like a, a maid. She has stepsisters, an evil stepmom. They meet at a ball, a masquerade ball. He ends up falling in love with her. He looks for her everywhere. And that's all you really need to know for season three. Colin and Penelope, he sees her in a different light after a while. I think in the show, they're going to give her a love interest for him to actually realize that Penelope is the bomb.com, which you're blind if you can't see that. I know people hate her, but I'm a stick beside her. I love my girl Penelope. And we don't really see enough, we don't really see Daphne after this. 
Like after I read Bridgerton, it's kind of dumb. They don't really come back into the books. I know I didn't really go into great detail about like books three, four, and five, but it's because like there's not a lot you can really say on them now, and, and I want to see what the show is going with it. You know, if they're gonna keep the same. I think they're gonna change a lot. We saw in season two that they barely kept a lot of the things the same. They kept the essence the same. But a lot of it has changed. So I feel like if you like the books a lot, like watch the show's probably gonna be hard for you because they're gonna change a lot. And if you read the books, you kind of look like the best in both worlds because you don't even know what's going on. You don't even know that they change stuff, but it's better. But anyway, I don't know if you guys like season one better than season two. Tell me if you disagree. Like, literally, I wanna hear, I wanna talk about this in the comments. I wanna debate in the comments. I wanna know what y'all are thinking. And subscribe because I know a lot of y'all are literally watching my videos and you don't subscribe. What's up with that? Follow me on Instagram and TikTok at Annabella.Bastine. I'm more pop, like on TikTok than anything, but follow me there. So if you have another show to recommend that has more seasons and more characters and crazy plot lines and everything, recommend it. And also another thing to note that this isn't like my idea. Like I've seen this done before by like Mike's Mike, some other people on YouTube. So I was just basically inspired by that. I was like, let me do one on Bridgerton. So again, this is not an original thought for me. Anyway, but I hope you guys liked today's video. I know it was a bit chaotic and Thank you for watching. Come back next time.